All right, today let's take a look at the impact of Ethernet couplers. Neutrik makes a CAT5E coupler and a CAT6A coupler. They're different. The CAT6A is a much shorter wire connection, much more direct, um, more high quality, high speed connection. This one here has just got straight wires in it. We'll take a look inside. How much do these impact the cable run? What's the difference between running a cable with a connection and a coupler versus a solid cable all the way through? I've got 10 10 meter pieces of SuperCat XM cable here as well as a 100 meter reel of SuperCat XM. So we can compare what 10 pieces all coupled together does versus one continuous piece. And we can do that with the CAT5E couplers or the CAT6A couplers versus the entire run and see what the difference is. How much difference does it make? Are these couplers crippling your signal or do they not make much difference at all? All. Let's take a look at the difference between the CAT5E and CAT6A couplers from Neutrik. I've got them open here. Here's the NE8FF and you can see it just has four pairs of wire plus a ground wire. They're not twisted and they're not especially short either. And they mount inside of this metal aluminum extrusion and they're just panel mount connectors with wires going between that screw into it. The CAT6A is a completely different device. It's actually got a rubber outside to it that keeps it somewhat waterproof. And it's the size so that when you plug the connector in, it forms a little seal with the cable connector. And inside we have the two housings here where the connectors clip into. We've got our two ground connections that carry the ground from one side to the other of the shell and the RJ45. We've got a shielding surround that goes around the entire thing. And then here is our electrical connection. And if you look at it, it's a little circuit board and we've got the gold tabs. And in the shortest route possible, it connects one to the other. So it's very, very effective in minimizing any additional length or oddity to it. Let's go ahead and look. So we'll pull this out, pull this out. And we can actually, I can see through it a little bit and they're not twisted. It's hard to do that with the circuit board, but they are very short distances. All right, let's really quickly look at the charts and data that we'll get from the tester. I'll keep it real simple. One of the things we'll look at will be insertion loss, and that's the amount of signal that's lost in the cable. The red line is the specification. These four other lines represent the individual pairs, and we want those to be below the red line. A failure is when it goes above the red line and we have more loss than we want to have, or the specification dictates. The red line in some of the charts will go out to 500 megahertz if I'm doing a CAT6A test, and it'll go out to 100 megahertz if it's a CAT5E test. Next, we have next. Next is near end crosstalk, and that's the amount of signal bleeding from one pair to the other pairs. And we can see that the pairs are written out here, and the colors relate to that. And this red line here is the specification. For next, we want this jumbled mess of lines to be as far above this red line as possible. The red line is the maximum amount of crosstalk allowable, and this is upside down. So very loud crosstalk would be zero dB, and very quiet would be 140 or below. And here we have a cable that passes. This is a 100 meter of SuperCat XM. Power sub next is another version of that. ACR is attenuation crosstalk ratio. That takes into account kind of this insertion loss where we have attenuation and the next where we have crosstalk or the other crosstalk specs and combines them. So it's really kind of useful if you have a very low loss cable but a, lot, a little bit extra crosstalk, this ratio can still stay good or vice versa. 
but it's going to look at problems with these couplers or the quality of the pair twists and so on. Power sum ACR, ACR far. Let's get into return loss. Return loss is the bounce. It's the amount of signal that goes to one end and bounces back and reflects down and shows back up at the first end. And that jumbles things up and causes confusion and makes things messy. So we can look at that as well. And again, we want this to be as high above the red line as possible. When we have a bunch of couplers in there, it's going to cause things to bounce around a lot. So we should see some interesting stuff go on. Cool. Let's go do some testing. All right. So let's go ahead and test the 100 meter cable with no adapters at all. I've taken the shells off and plugged the RJ45s directly into the tester here. All right, so we're good here. So now we have a reference that we can go off of. I'm going to go ahead and test this again in the CAT 6A mode. All right, so we have the pass again. Let's go ahead and look at the 10 adapters. First, we'll do the CAT 5E and then the CAT 6A. Coupler number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And coupler number nine and cable number 10. Okay, so let's go ahead and test the CAT 5E couplers. Oh, we have a failure here. Oh, wow. Look at all those peaks and valleys. Those couplers are causing some sort of frequency related insertion loss issues. Let's go ahead and check the CAT 6A couplers and grab that data. Now, you would probably not want to do this as a standard setup for your gig, unless you like adapters a lot. But one good way to see if there's a problem is to magnify the problem, is to do it a bunch of times and then look at the cumulative effect so that we can then deduce what's going on with less of it. Let's go ahead and test this out. Insertion loss, 0.1 dB. Well, that doesn't look near as bad. These couplers are definitely better. For this test, what I'm going to do is take two 10 meter cables and put a single coupler between the CAT 5E, the CAT 6A, and then we'll do a third test where I put a very, very short, high quality jumper between, and I put two of those couplers on there, two CAT 6As or two CAT 5Es, and then we'll be able to compare the single coupler versus the short cable and a second coupler and see how much a coupler adds or degrades the signal. So let's go ahead and check that out. All right, and we'll do just the single. Cool. So I went on to do a bunch more tests of various configurations. And now let's go ahead and take a look at these test results and see what we find. All right, so we grabbed a lot of data from a lot of tests. So I'm gonna focus on the failures and the highlights. I have uploaded all of these data files to the YouTube channel members Telegram channel. And you can find a link to that in the members dashboard in the messages there. You'll be able to download and dive into these further should you choose to do so and hang out with other channel members there. All right, so let's start with the 100 megahertz, 100 meter Super Cat XM with no couplers. And let's go ahead and go down the line real quick here. Wire map data, this gives you the specifications of the cable. Insertion loss, this 24 dB is that critical spec for AES 50 that we need to be below, and we're well below that. Near end crosstalk, power sum near end crosstalk, kind of cumulative version of it attenuation crosstalk ratio, power sum attenuation crosstalk ratio near, attenuation crosstalk ratio far, power sum attenuation crosstalk ratio far, and return loss are the graphs that we can see. 
let's go ahead and take a look at insertion loss when we add two cat 5 e couplers and we can see that we are at 21.6 db at 100 megahertz instead of 20 point something so maybe we lost a db or so with the cat 5s and we lost about the same with the cat 6 so return loss wise we lose a db if we have some headroom there you're going to be fine and we can look at that the 500 megahertz we're doing just fine with no couplers but the cat 5e e couplers they don't like the high frequency they're not built to go above 100 megahertz and they sure don't deal with it well puts us out of spec there and the cat 6a couplers they do mess with us the green pair is out so this is adding two cat 6a couplers and two short cables so you do got to be careful with adding couplers to very long cables like 100 meters when running high data rates all right let's go ahead and look at this more extreme adventure where i put 10 10 meter cables together here's our reference point and when we add nine couplers 10 cable chunks we get all kinds of fun we get a little sawtooth here on the blue and the green with the brown kind of holding and the yellow kind of staying below and they're jumping above and giving us a fail in insertion loss let's take a look at the same thing with a cat 6a coupler much better for 100 megahertz we're fine even with 10 jumpers we're still within spec there let's look at it the 500 megahertz with the cat 5e jumpers it's chaos and probably gonna fail and with the cat 6a jumpers it holds strong and then goes wonky towards the end there and it's just a green pair it's kind of interesting if you're running cat 5e 100 megahertz stuff you can throw a few cat 6a couplers in there and be golden cat 5e couplers are not going to be as friendly cat 5e coupler at 100 megahertz and the cat 6a where it makes barely any difference nine cat 6a couplers hasn't really messed with us next there's our near-end crosstalk look at that just a mess return loss and we're failing the acrf the ps acrf and the insertion loss with that one this one's just failing insertion loss so this is very interesting nine cat 6a couplers testing out to 100 megahertz we're off by 0.1 db of insertion loss and pass everything else with the cat 5e couplers we fail in three different categories if we go to the 500 megahertz test we fail all over the place with the cat 5e couplers and we're failing in three categories with the cat 6a so probably don't want to use that many jumpers let's go ahead and look at the two 10 meter cables 20 meters 66 feet one cat 5e coupler one cat 6a coupler two 5e couplers two 6a couplers we can see the 6a couplers are better but they all pass i mean if you're running shorter cables throwing a few couplers in there is not going to really make a difference you're not close enough to the spec but if you're again if you're running high frequencies now we have issues look at this brown pair has gone way out of spec with the cat 5e coupler and with the cat 6a coupler it stays within spec and the same thing with the double 5e couplers and the 6a couplers hold it within spec you really want those 6a couplers the 5e ones suck cool cool i think that pretty much highlights uh what i was looking to find out here is how much do these couplers affect it and what do they do and we can see that adding the couplers in to the cables creates a degradation of the signal and the cat 5e e couplers definitely degrade the signal more than the cat 6a couplers Cool, cool. I hope this adds some clarity to EtherCon couplers. Low speed data, 100 megahertz, you can throw a few in there. Avoid the Cat 5E couplers and use the Cat 6As whenever possible, especially with high speed data stuff that's over 100 megahertz or the cables are long. With short cables, it doesn't matter much. When you run really long cables, you want to be careful not to get too far into the limits of the specifications.